Welcome to one more problem solving session on functions. In this particular session, I am going to talk how you can print all the prime numbers in a range. Let's say the range is between 2 to 15, so it will print 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13 and so on. So R1 represents the lower part of the range, R2 represents the upper part of the range. So the first thing I'm going to do is ask the user enter the range for the prime numbers. So user is going to enter R1 as the lower range, R2 as the upper range. Now since I need to find out all the prime numbers in this particular range, I don't need to do any initialization because R1 and R2 are provided to me from the keyboard. So as long as R1 is less than or equal to R2, okay, and I keep incrementing R1 every time so that I go to the next number to check if it is prime. So I'm going to say prime check R1. Okay, it's going to check whether it's a prime number or not. Now what I'm going to do a little different in this particular thing is I'm going to pass R1 to a prime check function. And here in this prime check, I'm not going to return any value. I'm going to say it's a void prime check and then I'm going to actually just print if that input number is a prime number in this prime check itself. So int, let me say it's the number which is being passed. Then what I'm doing is I'm using a variable called as divisor with the initial value 2. In order to understand the logic of this prime check function, I would request you to take a look at the description section of this particular video where a link to the algorithm of how to find a prime number is provided. Now I'll first do the typing and I'll then go ahead and explain the logic to you. While divisor is less than or equal to square root of the number, I'm going to do the following steps. If number mod divisor is equal to zero, all right, then I'm going to say printf, sorry, then I'm going to say the number is not a prime number and I'm going to return back to main function. I'm just going to do a return. So here I can't give a void. I'll have to give an int. Okay. So I'm just going to return with minus one to the main function. Although I'm not using the value, I'm just returning with a minus one. Now I'm going to increase divisor every time. But once I check the first even numbers, that is a number divisible by two, I don't need to check whether it's divisible by four, six, eight, and so on. So if divisor tends to be greater than two, then I'm going to increase divisor by two. So it goes from three to five and so on, three to five, seven, and so on. Else I'm going to increase the divisor by one. This will be clear once I just run through a bit of logic. So I can just make this divisor plus plus. All right. And then when I come back here, when I come out of the loop, I'm going to just put a statement. If number happens to be greater than one, I'm simply going to print F the percentage D and I'm going to print the number. All right. And here on a normal case, I'll simply do a return zero. That means everything is fine. So let me try to explain to you what is the working of this program or how the logic really works. Let's say I send a number two. R1 is two, number gets the value two. Divisor is two. Square root of two, okay, is a very small number. It is one point something. So two is not less than equal to one point. So it will come out here. Since the number was two, two is greater than one. It will print two as a prime number. Let's say we enter five. So R1 is five, number is also five. Since number is 5, divisor is 2. Square root of 5 is somewhere like 2 point something. So 2 is less than or equal to 2 point whatever it is. So this condition is true. 5 divided by 2 is equal to 0 is false. Now divisor is 2. So I'll make divisor equal to 3. Now 3 is definitely not less than or equal to square root of 5. So since number is greater than 1, it will print 5 as the next prime number. This process will keep going on as long as the input number is being passed on to prime. Suppose I send a number like say 30, R1 is 30, number is 30, divisor is 2. So 30 
Square root of 30 is somewhere like around 5 point something. So 2 is less than or equal to 5 point something. 30 mod 2, the remainder is going to be 0. So it's going to return back to the main and it's going to increment R, R1 by one more value. Although I am not capturing the value of the return, it is this return statement ensures that if this number gets divided by divisor, then I go back to this particular point and increase the value of R1 plus plus. So in order to see if this particular logic is really working, we shall take it into the online GDB compiler and just try to run it. Okay, I'm just copying this particular piece of program. Let's try to compile it first. Let's see if there are any errors. Okay, so I have not declared the prototype of prime check. This is something I need to do. So what I'm going to do is just cut and paste this fellow here and take over the prototype here. All right, so this is a good enough that it should now be able to compile. So it's asking me to enter the range for prime numbers. Let us say I enter all prime numbers between 1 to 100. Okay. So now you will notice that it has starting printed the prime numbers like 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29, 31, all the way till 97. I believe there are 25 prime numbers between 1 to 100 and these should be really equal to 25. Now, this is a very simple program. In the main, I am just accepting the range. So in this case, R1 was 1, R2 was 100. Now initially R1 is being copied to number. Square root of 1 is definitely not, so divisor 2 is not less than or equal to 1. So I come here, sorry I don't go into the body of the loop. Since number is not greater than 1, I don't print the number. Then number is 2, okay the next number R2 becomes 2, sorry R1 becomes 2, you come here number becomes 2. Then 2 is not less than the square root of 2. So directly since number is 2 is greater than 1, I'm going to print 2. So this way this process keeps on happening. So and finally I'm able to print all the numbers between 1 to 100 which are prime numbers. Please take a look at the description section of this video to have a look at the algorithm for the prime check logic.